Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. And one of the main important things in um, this section is the idea of the cardinal number formula. And this is what the cardinal number formula says. The cardinal number formula says that if you want to find the number of elements in the union of A and B, remember union means unite into one big happy family, right? So we're putting all the elements together. If you want to find the number of elements in A union B, it's not enough to just know the number in A and the number in B. Let's say that we knew, for example, that the number of elements in A is 10 and the number of elements in B is 14. You might think that if we're putting the two sets together, then the number of elements in their union would be the sum, 10 plus 14 equals 24. And you would possibly be right, but you would possibly be wrong as well. What would that possibly depend on? The numbers in common, that's right. So, for example, it's possible that there are 10 in A and 14 in B and nothing in the intersection between them, right? So this would look like 10 and 14 and zero in those regions. If their intersection is empty, then yes, the total number that's in A union B would be 24, but suppose that intersection were not empty. Suppose that the intersection had two in it. There were two elements that were in both set A and set B. Okay, then in order for the number of elements in A to be 10, that means there must have been eight that were in A but not B, right? And in order for there to be 14 in B, how many would have to have been in B but not A? 12 of them, right? In order for the, these to have a total of 10 in A and 14 in B. Does that make sense? In order to have 10 in this circle, if you know that there are two in the centerpiece, then there would have to be 10 minus two is eight remaining in this piece over here. And in order for there to be 14 in this circle, if you know that there are two in the intersection, then there would have to be 14 minus two equals 12 over here. So now the number in A union B is not 24. How many is it? 22, right? It's the number that are in A, which is 10, plus the number that's in B, which is 14, but here we're over counting by two, right? So in order to fix that, we, in our formula, we subtract off that extra piece, that one that we counted twice, the intersection. So 10 plus 14 minus two would actually be 22. So what the cardinal number formula basically reminds us of is that we have to take into consideration the overlap when we're working with cardinalities. All right, let me give you another example. A total of 120 high school students were surveyed about their winter break <laughs> shopping habits. The results revealed that 50% shop for new clothes, 30% shop for school supplies, and 25% shop for clothes and school supplies. How many students shop for clothes or school supplies over the break? All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to, instead of having percentages, let's go ahead and get this in terms of hard numbers. So in uh, this, we know there are, the whole is 120, and they're telling us 50% of that shop for new clothes. So how do I figure out how many shopped for new clothes? That's true. Dividing by two, half, right? Or in decimal form, whenever you have a percent of the whole, of means multiply. So the percent of the whole is 0.50 in decimal form times the whole, which is 120. This is the same as dividing 120 by two, taking half of it. So we're going to have 60 there. And that's the number that shop for new clothes. 
All right, how do we find the 30% that shop for school supplies? 0.30 is the percent of, so multiply times 120. Okay, what is 30% 0.3 times 120? 36, right? Three times 12 is 36. Okay, and then 25% shot for clothes and school supplies. So that's gonna look like 0.25, the decimal form of the percent of means times the whole, which is 120. A quarter of 120 is 30, good. 30 shot for clothes and supplies. And what we're looking for is how many students shop for either clothes or school supplies. Okay, so let's draw, um, to help you, this is, this is a classic cardinal number formula problem. And let me tell you how I know that. Or, clothes or school supplies is what we're looking for. What operation is that going to be? Union. Okay, so they're asking us to find the union or the cardinality of the union of two sets. And what they're giving us is the number in each set and they're giving us this and, which means intersection. And always means intersection. So when you're given, you're trying to find the union and you're given the number in each set plus the intersection, that is exactly the situation. The number in A union B equals the number in A plus the number in B minus the number in A intersect B minus the overlap. So one way to work this problem is to have memorized that formula, write it out like a formula, replace each piece with its value, and solve for the missing piece. We'll do that first, and then we'll draw a picture, because you might like the picture way better. All right, so we're trying to find the number that are clothes or school supplies. So let's say that clothes is set A, school supplies is set B, so clothes and school supplies would be A intersect B, and then clothes or school supplies would be A union B. We're looking for A union B, but we know the rest. How many are in set A, new clothes? 60. How many are in set B? 36. And then minus, how many are in the intersection? 30. And so it means that the number in A union B is what? 66. And that answers the question. Okay, if you don't like that approach, draw a picture. Let's draw a Venn diagram and use it to do the same thing. We're going to have our universal set, which is the 120 high school students that were surveyed. And then we're going to have a set which represents A, our new clothes. And we're going to have a set that represents B, or school supplies. Okay, I'm going to number the regions. You do not have to number the regions. I'm only doing this so we can discuss it. Let's call them one, two, three, and four. Okay, you tell me this number 60 is describing how many students fall into which region of the Venn diagram. Two and three, that's right. Everybody in regions two and three got new clothes, didn't they? And all we know about these people is they're all the people who got new clothes. So, all right, so this is actually just going to be a combination of regions two and three. All right, and then what about 36? Describe for me where 36 goes. Three and four, that's right. So either of regions three and four are a combination of those. All right, now describe for me this number 30. Where does that go? That's just in region three. We know that because it's everybody who's in both, right? The overlap. So that one we actually can put right here on the Venn diagram, 30. Usually when you're working a problem using a Venn diagram like this to answer a question about a survey, about information about a group, 
Um, you're gonna start by filling in the overlap first. Not always, but very frequently, because what you're looking for in this information we're given is that one region that's described that we know for sure. So that number represents exactly one region, not split up into a couple of them. And then you work your way out from there. So what could we use now that we know that region three has 30 in it? What could we use, for example, to get region two? 60 minus 30, why? Because we know that in all of set A there were 60, right? That includes regions two and three, but we already know that 30 is there. So we're going to say 60 minus the 30 that we've already figured out, and how many does that leave? 30. 30, okay, so we're gonna have 30 here. And then what about in region four? How could we figure out region four? 36 minus 30, good. Set B had 36, and we need to take away those of those 36, the 30 that were in region three, leaving only six in region four. So it's like a little puzzle <coughs> using the information. Now, this is actually enough information to answer the question because what we were trying to figure out was how many either shopped for clothes or for supplies and that is A union B. And from this we can see that the number that are in A union B is what? A union B is going to be regions 2, 3, and 4, right? So that's going to be 30 plus 30 plus 6, which is 66 that way as well. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like it.